my blood loss story and what you can do if your dog or cat starts bleeding. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Last week I went to the dentist. I had a tooth thing going on. I was told I'd need my wisdom tooth extracted. Oh, I think I need to keep all the wisdom I have. Regardless, they needed to extract the wisdom tooth. Okay, fine, a bit of local anesthetic. It shouldn't be too much of a big deal. They're doing the extraction. It doesn't seem too bad. You're frozen up. They break the root. It's okay, it's fine. A bit more digging, a little bit longer. You know, they, while they're doing that, they the crown that's put on in front of the tooth, it just falls off. Oops. Regardless, okay, but I get out of there, the tooth is pulled out. I got got from my mouth, so packed. Seemed good for about three hours. You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, I replace the gauze after a couple hours. All of a sudden, it just starts to bleed. And it bleeds, and it bleeds, and it bleeds. It literally took, from that time, it took 12 hours. There was 12 hours of bleeding. So here, here's all the things that I tried. If your dog or cat has a bleeding issue, this is what you should do, and I'll just tell you how things turned out. Number one, say your dog's cut his foot, I had a tooth pulled out. Regardless, the first principle is always the same. You need to apply pressure with some type of compress. I had gauze, you're gonna have gauze, it could be a cloth, it doesn't matter what it is. Just cut the front of her foot, there's a big blood squirting out here, out by her wrist. You're gonna put gauze on top and you're gonna apply pressure. You're gonna hold that down. If it soaks through, put another layer of gauze on top of that. You wanna keep that pressure. You wanna keep the gauze on top of that for at least 30 minutes. The biggest mistake I see with many pet parents is that they put, they'll compress it, they'll put the gauze on. They take it off far too fast. You need, you need to hold it on there, put moderate amount of pressure and you need to leave it. If it soaks through, put more gauze on top. Just hold that on there for at least 30 minutes. Number two. Mm. No, it's not ice to have yourself a cool drink. We're gonna cool down the tissue, cause those blood vessels to constrict. I want you to take the ice, wrap it in a cloth here, and then you're gonna apply that to the side of the wound. What we're trying to do is cool down that tissue. It's gonna cause a thing called vasoconstriction. When that happens, there's far less bleeding. This is really important if you've got bleeding in the mouth. Number three, oh, it's elevate. Whatever is bleeding, get that above the heart. Just the act of elevation, just think about it. There's lower blood flow. You're gonna lower blood flow to wherever the bleeding is, there's just gonna be less bleeding. With Tula's leg here, we're compressing the wound on top of her wrist, as well as elevating it. Number four, Get some tea. Tea is an astringent, meaning it's gonna like tighten down that tissue, decreasing the amount of bleeding. It's not just any tea. There's two types of teas that have been studied for bleeding, green tea and black tea. So you take yourself a black tea bag, slightly moistened, just lightly moistened, and then you apply that directly onto the wound. Number five is used by boxers. It's Vaseline. The Vaseline creates this thick barrier and in some cases they have wounds that just aren't stopping you're like, oh, what else can I do? You know, try, try a layer of it. And you can just apply that directly onto your dog, your cat's wound. And or yourselves if you've got one that's non-stop bleeding. And it's okay if your dog licks it afterwards. At least it's gonna keep them regular. My story, unfortunately I, I wasn't aware of the tea or the Vaseline. I would have tried that, but I did, you know, I had tons of compresses. I kept having to repeat gauze. I put in ice. I made my head is up so I'm, you know, it's long, out, well away from my heart. And I could not stop bleeding. I was in a merge. They put some funky thing in. Uh, an hour later, it fell out and it started bleeding again. Eventually, they put in some topical thing called amino caproic acid, which uh, well, actually can prevent blood clotting breakdown. Don't know why it happened. They don't know. There's a weird small percent of people that can have a thing. Post extraction bleeding. I'm feeling pretty normal now, although it did take like a good three or four days. I was surprised how long it took. Like you'd think like how much damage can a little tooth cause, right? But if you get that amount of bleeding, like, phew, man, I can wipe you out. 
So my point here is if your dog, your cat, they have an injury and they're bleeding, it seems like substantial, like you need to take pretty immediate action. Like you've got to compress it. You've got to do whatever you can to slow down that bleeding. And if it's not stopping, go in and see your veterinarian. Hopefully you're going to have a better experience than I did. And they're going to figure out what's going on, stop that bleeding pretty quickly. But at the very least, go through those steps, try those remedies, get that bleeding to stop as soon as you can. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets or what to do if your dog or cat starts bleeding. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.